Pastor Jack. Good evening, church. Good to see you out tonight. Uh, just a couple of things um, to mention. Just spoke to Brother Neil briefly this afternoon. Uh, just to let you know that uh, Sister Emma, Sister Linda are back. They got back today. As you know, that they had to be up all night uh, to keep Emma up all night last night for some tests. Uh, apparently, the results of those tests were quite pleasing. But she does have to have more tests and more blood tests. So let's keep praying for Emma and uh, pray that they specialists might be able to give us some help. Uh, they're at home tonight resting up. Uh, let's continue to pray for the Van Attens as they seek a rental. And then um, let's see, Brother Neil's heading down towards Melbourne. For his preaching down there this weekend. So let's be praying for, the, for Brother Neil there. And Brother Phil's preaching at Toowoomba this weekend. So let's be praying for the Highland family as they head up there. <coughs> Um, just to let you know that Brother John Paul will be preaching for us again this Sunday, if you didn't already know that. He'll be preaching for us this, this AM service. Brother Jim Hebley will be preaching for us on the PM service. So let's pray for these two pre um, preachers as they come and minister the word to us on Sunday. Um, <clears throat> and then I just want to remind you about Brother Bain and the meetings there on the 16th to the 19th, uh, Sunday to Wednesday. Uh, for those meetings, I believe that Brother Bain and uh, Brother Phil will be preaching for us those those meetings. And uh, Brother Neil mentioned that uh, we'll be taking up a love offering to help cover the cost of those meetings. So i just let you know that, that you might be able to uh, be prepared for that. And we'll take up that love offering for those preachers on the last night of the meetings, which will be the Wednesday evening. And I think that's about it. Just a normal week this week. I don't think there's any meetings on through the week. Um, just a, a regular week, and then we'll be back here on Sunday. All right. don't think I've missed anything, have I? All right, Brother Raph's going to come up. He's got a devotional thought for us this evening, so I appreciate that. And um, if you'd like to get your Bibles out, we'll um, see what he has for us tonight. I gather you want this on, Jess? question for you tonight. How's your prayer life? Simple question. I think most of us would agree with that comment. It could be better. Recently I um, acquired a book. I, I, one of my favourite authors is A.W. Towser. Wonderful, wonderful writer. And I acquired this book on prayer. And it's really a compilation of um, excerpts from a number of his books where he talked on prayer. And it's funny uh, how when you read something of Towser's, he's always got these very pithy sayings, really, really pithy sayings. And the saying I want you to think about tonight as we go through, it says this, prayer at its best is the expression of the total life. I'll say it again. Prayer at its best is the expression of yours or mine total life. On the contra contrary wise, prayer at its worst is the expression of our total life. I want you to think about that for a little while. But let's ask the Lord to pray. Uh, Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us tonight as we uh, open up the word. Father, we thank you for this uh, Wednesday night meeting. We thank you for those who are here. We thank you for those who are online. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, opportunity of coming together. And Lord, we, we definitely need you tonight. Lord, we, we, can, we think of you high and lifted up. You are everlasting. You are God. And uh, Lord, nothing is impossible with you. And we pray, Lord, we come tonight, Lord, as needy souls. We've already admitted, some of us have admitted, that our prayer life could be a whole lot better. And Lord, we look to you 
in prayer as we consider these scriptures, that you would help us, Lord, in our prayer life. Help us to be more attuned to you, more in communion with you on a daily basis. Help us, Lord, to have a delight in prayer, not to consider it a duty or a burdensome, but, Lord, to just delight to be able to praise our Heavenly Father, to pray to you, Lord, and just rejoice in you each day. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, with that thought in mind, I'd ask you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, there are some verses in the Bible, and I don't know about you, but for me, I look at these verses and sort of shrink, like a shrinking violet when I look at these verses, because they're so challenging. So as we look at 1, Corinthians, uh, 1 Thessalonians sorry, chapter 5, and we'll start off in verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. The verse I want you to consider tonight is the verse 17, and you guessed it, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Now, I don't believe that verse says that we should do nothing else but pray that we should be on our knees all day long praying. I don't believe it means that. But what I think it does mean is that we should maintain a communion and fellowship with God all the way throughout our day, through our waking hours, and sometimes through our waking up in the sleeping hours. Um, sometimes we have our best, best prayer sessions, I find, when I wake up in the middle of the night, can't get back to sleep, and I start praying. But nothing should hinder, should hinder us from praying in its proper season. And the world can creep in and our, our interests can creep in and flood out our, those desires to pray. The flesh can take over. It should be a moment-by-moment -moment fellowship with the Lord. Now, we might think, oh, Brother Raf, you're just talking about the old mystics of old. They could do that. But how do we do it? We can. It says at the end of that verse, it says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. God is able to improve your prayer life and my prayer life. Now, I'm not, I'm not sharing this message from a point of view that I've got, this, I've got a handle on this particular topic. All I'm doing is sharing some thoughts that I've considered, meditated on, and just thought about. And I thought it would be an encouragement, if not a challenge, to each one of us in our Christian life. We're entering a new, a new era in this church. We've got a new pastor. We've just, in, we've just enlarged the building. There's a lot of spare seats here. And we need to pray for this church. It's, under, it's continually under uh, stress or attacks from outside, sometimes from inside. We've got a new pastor who needs lifting up in prayer. Look at each other. We need lifting up in prayer. The Van Nattens need lifting up in prayer. Sister Jazz needs lifting up in prayer. We all need prayer. Some more than others. But we need to be thinking about this matter of prayer. So pray without ceasing. That was one, one particular verse. Now, some other companion verses. Turn to Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. Well, I'm sure there's nothing I'm saying here is going to be new to you tonight. It's probably just reminding you of old truths that we need to be reminded of. So in Romans chapter 12 and verse 12, it says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Continuing instant in prayer. That, that has the idea of persevering in prayer. Persevering. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like praying. Uh, but a lot more times than not, I, I don't feel like praying. And uh, sometimes I, 
you think it's a bit of a burden. Oh, I've got to pray. I've got to pray. But hopefully it's not always like that. But we need to persevere in prayer. Sometimes you're getting answers to prayer, and but sometimes you don't. You think as though you're just praying to the ceiling and nothing's happening. But it's just to persevere. We talked on Sunday about never, never, never giving up. We just need to continue on. God doesn't doesn't guarantee he's going to answer your prayer on the spot. Steve and Sharon are looking at selling their house. They've been praying about it, no doubt. And it hasn't happened at this stage, I gather. Brother and sister, keep praying. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. And maybe there's other, others of you who, who have been praying for a particular soul. I've got a friend of mine I've been praying for for years. That God would save him. There's no indication outwardly that there's any indication that he's come even close. But what I, I don't, we don't look at the outside. We don't look at the externals. We just keep looking at the Lord who was able to do the miraculous. So don't give up. The Bible doesn't tell us how many times a day we should pray. It doesn't say everybody should pray three times a day. As soon as you get up in the morning, lunchtime and before you go to bed. It doesn't say that. When we look at some of the old saints, we look at Daniel. Now, Daniel had a habit of praying three times a day. And when he was challenged with the lion's den, he just prayed three times a day. He didn't flinch. He didn't faint. He didn't get weary. He didn't put it aside for his own benefit. No, he put, him, he, he put prayer as a main priority. Turn, if you would, to Psalm 119, verse 164. Psalm 119, verse 164. This is an indication of David and his prayer habit. Psalm 119, verse 164, which says, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Seven times a day. Look, you could pray 50 times a day. You could pray 10 times a day. It's, there's no prescribed time that we're supposed to pray. Jesus at times prayed all night. The night he was selecting his disciples, and I think we found that in, um, in Luke chapter 18, verse... No, no, sorry, it wasn't there. But he did, he prayed all night, seeking the Heavenly Father, asking the Heavenly Father for wisdom. And maybe in some times when we're faced with a major decision or a major crisis or a major situation, uh, we pray more earnestly. We pray more more fervently, if you like, for longer periods through the various trials we can go through. And what, what I really think it's reminding us of here tonight is that prayer is an essential part of your Christian life. It's an essential part of your Christian life. It's not just an option. It's not something we only do when we come together on a Wednesday night. It's an essential part of your Christian, yours and my Christian life. And there should be a special place where you can get away, hopefully. It's a bit difficult with two young girls, no doubt. Um, get away somewhere quietly and be able to pray. I remember a sister giving a testimony in church back in Wagga many, many years ago, and she had a young family and she found it very, very difficult to pray. And uh, one night she was, um, she was trying to pray. She was up at 2 o'clock in the morning and she was praying. But there was a mouse in the wall, scratching against the, the plasterboard. And uh, she said, oh, Lord, please take away the mouse so I can pray. The mouse was gone. That was, that, that was the quick answer to prayer. Um, that's Sam Duker's wife, actually, Nora. Turn across to Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, please. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, says... Oh, sorry, all there. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer. So first of all, we've had prayer without ceasing. Then we've had continuing instant in prayer. And this verse says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Now, sometimes we, we tend to limit our idea of prayer and think, well, that's just asking God for stuff. But prayer is a whole lot more than just asking God for stuff. Prayer involves worship for a start. 
Prayer involves thanksgiving to the Lord for, for everything. Uh, pr so prayer, prayer is praying for other people, not just yourselves. So prayer is more ranging than just, um, than just praying for yourself, or asking for things. This means to persevere and guard against prayerlessness. Guard against thanklessness. Being thankful, I think, is the foundation of a healthy prayer life. Being thankful, I believe, is the foundation, one of the foundations of a healthy prayer life. Because if you're thanking God for everything, the Bible says to for everything give in everything give thanks and for everything give thanks, that's showing that your heart and yourself is dependent upon God. And you're also acknowledging that whatever good you have in your life and whatever trial you have in your life comes from the hand of God. And we need to be thankful. You know, it was hard for me initially to thank the Lord for cancer in my body. But I came to a point where I can thank, thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. You've got, you've got a purpose in this. It was a very humbling experience and still is to a certain degree. But we can thank God for everything. And in the midst of it, it may be hard to do that. We can thank... The Van Nattens can thank the Lord for where they're at at the present time. He's got a purpose in all these things. He knows what's going on. And we need to be, we need to be praying and um, encouraging one another. Chapter, chapter 18 of Luke. Go across there, please. We're just looking at a few verses tonight and gleaning just a few little thoughts off each verse. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Now this is Jesus speaking now. This is Jesus. In verse 1 he says, He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men, we, we need to always to pray and not to faint. And you know, the, the problem is that in our fleshly desires for answer to prayer, we tend to after a while give up. I said, oh, well, God's not going to answer that prayer. But he doesn't say that. He says, men ought always to pray and not to faint, not to grow weary in your prayer. Now, he's got a purpose. If there's a delay, he, he can either say, either, either say yes to your prayer and answer it, or he can say no to your prayer and, and uh, he may tell you why, he may not, not tell you why, or he may just say wait. So he can do a number of things. But whatever the situation, whatever the, whatever the response or the lack of, we need to continue to pray if we're praying the will of God. Now, the Bible says, whether you therefore eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. <coughs> so really, everything we do as Christians, whether we're working at, at um, what's that place you work at? Slide on? <laughs> I knew it was something on. Try on. We had a mental blank there. Whether you're retired, whether you're advising people on IT matters, whether you're shifting paver blocks into trailers and doing crazy stuff like that, whether you're working or whether you're rainwear, whatever it is, we should be doing all to the glory of God. We tend to think that. We tend to put our... Sometimes we tend to think in our, we put our secular part of our life there and we put our spiritual life here. There really should be one of the same. There shouldn't be a separation. It, our, our spiritual life should be, is, is all-encompassing in your whole life. Now, we're new creatures in Christ. We're not to uh, go to work and I'm in secular mode and I listen to the bawdy jokes and take cash payments for this and that and do all sorts of things. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to church tonight. Don't I look good? You know, it's not like that. We, 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 it's, it's encompassing the whole life. We need a prayerful state of mind to do just that. Not, don't neglect to pray. Acknowledge the Lord in every situation. And thank God for all things, whatever happens. Because all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen? And never, never, never give up. Now, I mentioned Taos' book. This little book is called Prayer, Communing with God in Everything. Collected from insights of A.W. Taos. I'm going to read a portion here. I know it's, it can be a bit difficult when you read from a book and... Uh, be giving it a devotional, but I just want you to try and think about what he's saying here. Um, I can only read a chapter at a time, but like a page or two of towers is all I can handle. It's like eating a very, very rich fruitcake. You only have little slithers of it at a time because it's, it's very rich. So I'll start off with that statement again. Prayer at its best 
is the expression of the total life. So your prayer life expresses how you're going spiritually. That's challenging, isn't it? It is for me. Certainly there have been and will continue to be instances when an isolated prayer may be answered even when the one uttering it may not be living an exemplary Christian life. So an emergency prayer, if you like. <coughs> Lord, save me. But we assume that most of those who read this page are not satisfied to get a prayer through occasionally. I think we all want to see answers to our prayers, amen? They want to know a more satisfying prayer life, one that elevates and purifies every act of body and mind and integrates the entire personality into a single spiritual unit. In other words, a holistic approach, the whole of our being, being involved in prayer. Such prayer can only be the result of a life lived in the spirit. I think that makes, that's pretty common sense, isn't it, from a Christian perspective. <coughs> All things else being equal, our prayers are only as powerful as our lives. In the long pull, we pray only as well as we live. Pretty deep, isn't it? You have to really chew on this stuff. Some prayers are like a fire escape, only used in times of critical emergency. Never very enjoyable, but used as a way of terrified escape from disaster. And we, I'm sure we can testify to those prayers. I hope you don't have too many of those because you might be in a dangerous situation. They do not represent the regular life of one who offers them. Rather, they are the unusual and uncommon acts of, spiritual, of the spiritual amateur. So if that's all your prayer life is, just for emergencies, well, he calls you a spiritual amateur. William Law somewhere pleads for Christians to live lives that accord with their prayers. And one of our well-known hymns asked that God help us to live more nearly as we pray. To live more nearly as we pray. In other words, your, your real life in your, in your daily life to, to match up to your prayer life. Most of us in moments of stress have wished that we had lived so that prayer would not be unnatural to us and have regretted that we have cultivated prayer to the point where it would be as easy as natural as breathing. We do not want to leave the impression that prayer in times of sudden crisis is not a good and right thing. It is good to pray. And you hear about people who are in an incredibly dangerous situation. I heard of a person who was uh, as a child walking across the street and he just called out, he saw his child, he saw a car come, he just called out, Jesus. And the car stopped without an, within an inch of the child. But the, if the, if the car had the child would have been dead. And there are times when, in emergencies, we need to pray like that. It most certainly is, and God has said to be a very present help in trouble. But no instructed Christian wants to live his whole life on an emergency level. We, we, want, to do, we want to have something deeper and more far-reaching and more beneficial to ourselves and those around us than just emergency prayers. As we go on into God, we shall see the excellency of the life of constant communion where all thoughts and acts are prayers and the entire life becomes one holy sacrifice of praise and worship. To pray effectively, it is required of us that there be no unblessed areas in our lives nor parts of the mind or soul that are not inhabited by the Spirit. No impure desires allowed to live within us, no disparity between our prayer and our conduct. I think what he's saying there is total surrender and walking in the holiness of the Lord. And that's, that can be a bit of a challenge. All this, you might be sitting there thinking, all oh, this is too high a standard. How do we achieve this? And he addresses that. All this may appear to be placing a standard too high to be reached by men and women under the sun. But it is not so. If Christ is the kind of saviour he claims to be, he should be able to save his people from the bondage of sin. This is not to support the man-made doctrine of sinless perfection. We don't believe that. We, this church doesn't preach sinless perfection. 
And we don't believe that any of you will reach the stage of sinless perfection while here on earth. <coughs> I just lost my place. Here we go. It is rather to declare that God-inspired doctrine is possible to walk in the spirit and not fulfil the lust of the flesh. It is to say that God has made provision in the cross of Christ for his children to be delivered from the galling yoke of sin. And in Romans 6.11 it says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Undoubtedly, the redemption of Christ Jesus has sufficient moral power to enable us to live in a state of purity and love, where our whole life will be a prayer, individual acts of prayer that spring out of the kind of total living that will have about them a wondrous power not known to the careless or worldly Christian. There's some, quite some challenging uh, thoughts in that uh, particular little passage there, but really is, it really is asking God to help us to to live, a, live an attitude of prayer, to, to be always um, have our hearts prepared for the spontaneity of prayer, to thank the Lord for a blessing, to ask the Lord for an opportunity to, to share a gospel tract or to share the gospel, to bring people across our path. And look, this is no credit to the Lord was probably preparing me for this yesterday because I prayed yesterday, Lord, I want someone to... Well, first of all, I want someone to invite the church on Sunday. Remember what John Paul said on Sunday morning? This is a challenge for every one of us. He said, I want you to ask someone, invite someone along to church on Sunday morning. So that's a little reminder for us. There's still a few days left, so you can still, still get out there and do it. But yesterday morning I came up to church here. I came up about 9 o'clock and I just thought I'd just do a few little light, light things. Okay, uh, nothing too heavy. And uh, as happens often when you're up here in the church, a, a car will drive down the driveway and just drive around the driveway and just drive back out again. Just having a bit of a sticky beat. And it happens often. So yesterday a car drives down the driveway and drives around and I just waved. It was that dark tinting on the, on the, on the windows. I couldn't see who it was. And so they parked. Anyway, funny enough, they parked down the bottom here. And two, a couple got out and walked up to where I was, was at the shed there and said, oh, uh, my name's Alco and this is my husband, Sonny. We'd like to look in your church. And I thought, that's an unusual situation. You don't often have people come along and ask to look at the church. So I brought them up and had a look at the church. They were, they were Indian descent and uh, we started talking about various things. And um, then they asked me about the church. How much does the, does the council own the church? No, the council doesn't own the church. Does, does the council pay for the church? No, the council doesn't pay for the church. Does the government pay for the church? No, the government doesn't pay for the church. And no, we, we operate this church and so we own the property. And, and they're asking a few questions. And then... Um, and it turned out that she, she said, we're Hindu. And, and I said, well, you know, why are you here? And so I was just interested. I said, well, I want to invite you to church on Sunday. And so hopefully, and we're going to pray for them uh, later, for Sonny and Alco to come to church on Sunday. She gave me a little um, airdrop uh, message, or some, something about um, Hinduism, I believe it is. I haven't listened to it yet. But anyway, we're going to pray for Alco and, and Sonny. So you never know what the day will bring forth. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, say, Lord, how can I serve you today? And, and look for those opportunities. And pray, Lord, bring... And look, you can't give out a tract unless you've got one in your pocket. Now, unless you're carrying a tract, you can't give them out. So carry a tract. And pray, Lord, bring someone across my path that, that I can share the Lord. Look, there's so many things we can pray about. So many things. I, I, as I asked the question initially, how's your prayer life? And uh, my answer to me, I was the same, lacking. Could be a whole lot better. And I'm sure each of us were honest, we could all say that. I'm, I'm really answering for myself. My challenge is tonight is to, for you, each one of us, to ask the Lord, Lord, help, help me to improve my prayer life. Help us to have a greater communion with you. When I used to teach a youth group, I remember saying to the children, I said, you know, who has a best friend? And some of them put up their hands. And, and I'd say, now, if you, if you talk to your best friend continually and your best friend didn't talk to you, what sort of relationship do you think you'd have? And I'd say, oh, it wouldn't be very good. Well, when we read our Bible, God speaks to us. And when we pray, we talk to God. Now, if our, if our prayer life is lacking, then there's something wrong with the relationship. 
And so it's just a little bit of a challenge. It's been a challenge to me, so I'm just sharing with you, very gratefully, uh, that I can share it with you. Uh, check out our prayer life. Is your prayer life like a, a duty? Do you feel duty bound? Oh, I've got to pray this morning. I've got to pray tonight. Um, is it burdensome? Is it a sort of a legalistic bondage that you think I've got to do this, I've got to tick the box on prayer life? Or is it a delight? Do you love to pray? And to love to praise the Lord? You know, it's, it's, it can be a delight. It can be, a, it can be just a continuum through the day. And there's so many things we can pray about. I'm sure Brother Johnny has lots of things he can pray about at work, with all those various people he's got to pray for, and all of us. So just a, just a little devotional thought there to uh, have a look at your prayer life. Like we have to tune up our cars every now and again. And we have to tune up our prayer life, I believe, as well. So thanks for that. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, for that challenge tonight. Uh, Lord, help us to pray. Help us to pray as we ought. Help us not to faint. Help us not to be weary in our prayers. Lord, help us to, to have a, a, a heart that's right with you, to keep our heart with all diligence. Help us, Lord, just to, to praise you and thank you all day long. Uh, we have such a wonderful God. We have such a wonderful hope. We have such a wonderful hope of eternity. And I just pray and ask you, Father, and thank you for, for bringing this thought for us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Brother Johnny. Praise the Lord. And yes, there is plenty to pray about at work, no doubt. I had an emergency prayer today, actually. I lost a little talk bit, it's about six mil in size, it's about that big. And it fell out of the spanner and I heard a noise and it bounced and I was like, and you know, if we lose a tool at work, it's like, who, who didn't put this tool back? What happened to it? You know, and thinking, how am I going to leave this bay without finding this little thing? I said, Lord, would you help me find this little thing? And I did, I found it. Praise the Lord. How good it was to leave that bay knowing that all the tools were back in this spot. Ah, praise the Lord. Amen. Um, Brother Kim's going to come and read us a couple of missionary letters, so he'll come and read those, and then we'll take up some prayer requests and spend a bit of time in prayer. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, this is from the Johnson family in Timor. Dear, dear praying brethren, he starts off with Psalm 136, 1. I give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We give thanks unto the Lord for your prayers for us since coming to East Timor in August. We have had much better health than our previous time here in March and April earlier this year. Our bodies are still adjusting to things here, and we appreciate your prayers. These are updates. We have been able to get the application for the work visa and at this stage is still in process. We hired a lady to help us with this and she has been some help but I feel she has also missed some things that have slowed the process up a little. The normality here is to get different answers depending on who you talk with and so it was no surprise that when we came back we had different answers than when we left but before only one of us had to be on a contract but now both Ter and I must have a contract each also for every foreigner employed at CETI City uh, must also employ a Timorese. Thankfully dropped from two Timorese per foreigner because they already house and feed an, a number. Because our work visas are in process we can extend the tourist visas for the family until a decision is made. While sorting some things out at immigration, T was talking with a Malaysian lady when T asked her why she was in East Timor. Her answer was that she was searching for something but didn't know what. The only track that we had the only track we had a track was in Chinese, which she could read and understand, which Tia gave her. As we were trying to get some paperwork done, Aldo was was able to talk with her further in a small amount of time there. We pray for more divine appointments like these. There are now a lot of Asian foreigners here, so a diversity of tracts are needed, and there is a great need for good Bibles to give out. 
the building work of the rooms we all the building work of the rooms we we will be using is still continuing but it's now close to finishing and we should be in within the next fortnight with only small things to do it has been a busy couple of months with block work tiling re-roofing painting please pray that we can settle in and focus more on the spiritual work rather than the physical once we get on top of things here we will be, we plan to go for a trip into the mountains as there is a lady wanting to be baptised, babies for dedication and supplies to take up. There has been a number of visitors for the morning tea time service. We are unsure which, where each of these stand, them stands with Christ, but, now, but know that a couple that need salvation, one of which is Am Amorsi, who is interested in knowing more and has been to one service. Please pray for Elena for salvation who came to church for a couple of weeks but now her family won't let her come anymore. God bless the Johnson family. Okay. The Babia family and they're from the uh, Mindanao, the Philippines. Right. Dear Pastor Phil Highland and Church, greetings from the islands of Mindanao, Philippines. Our great God continues to bless. It's always great to see his guidance. We were able to secure our exit clearance from the Bureau of Immigration without hassle and, and staffs were so were just so accommodating that we were able to get them to get it in just one hour. God is so amazing. Soul winning. Soul winning in our church always have them two by two. I was left out with no partner. I ventured into the park with a mind to just pass out tracks. I stumbled into one precious soul and led him to the Lord. He is now faithfully attending church for the third time last Sunday. Please pray for him as he has a heart condition. His name is Jun Halati. Praise God for our four baptisms in the month of September, two of whom are attending church for, for quite some time. I did not ask them to get baptised, but I was praying for them to follow the Lord in baptism and God answers prayers. Prayer request. We will be in Australia from the 5th of October till December 1, 20, uh, this year. Please have us in your prayers. We will be renewing our passports. Please do pray for the quick processing of it so we could go back in the field in on time. Other prayer requests. One, soul save and baptise. Two, Bible studies. Three, Bible Institute. Four, please pray for the spiritual growth of the new converts. Amen. Your missionaries to the Philippines, Anne, Marianne, and Kent Timothy. And that's it. Amen. Thanks for the Kim. All right. I take it Brother Neil's going to be meeting up with Arne down there in Melbourne um, at the church there. So that'll be good. Catch up with him, get some news. But uh, let's remember those prayer requests that were mentioned. And then um, we'll take up a few prayer requests and spend a bit of time in prayer. Um, <clears throat> so why don't we start from this side over here? Do we have any prayer requests on this side? Brother Marsh? Yes, I had an infection from a cut in my foot. And uh, we we're kind of concerned about it. I appreciate the church prayer. Pray about that. Let's... <coughs> we have one big item in the furniture line that we still need to sell. The shoe. I know that's a little bit carnal, but it's a loose around our neck right now. <laughs> if I could get rid of it. Okay, let's keep praying for that too. Brother Marsh has an infection in his foot due to an injury and he has one more uh, large item that he'd like to sell. Um, we can clear that off. Good brother Kim. We uh, are in a uh, bottom rack on Saturday. This is Jeff Roberts with Jeff Wilson's name. That's his card. Up to safety with him. Okay. So a couple of them, some of them. 
some of the men and the younger fellows are going to go out on Saturday um, for an outing, a bit of fellowship, fun. So let's just pray for safety there. That would be a blessing as they encourage one another. <coughs> In the middle section, <coughs> Brother Rav. Pray for Sonny and Alco. As they were invited to attend church on Sunday, pray that the Lord would impress upon them to do that. Uh, the, Brother Dan. Brother Dan's looking for the Lord's will and direction and looking for a new job. <coughs> also, let's keep, not, as I mentioned earlier, let's pray for the, their rental situation. Yes, a couple of guys at work don't know the Lord, they profess they don't know the Lord. Let's be praying if we could for them. Uh, that's uh, Mike and Eli. That's good, bro. <clears throat> pray for their salvation, pray for an open door to witness to them. If they want to know anything about the Lord, they can take their pick. There's a number of guys there, so but, uh, just pray the Lord work on their hearts. Brother Mike, huh? Joe, brother Joe Hayden, he's pretty crook on the weekend, but I thought he might have got a CV at the moment. It's all going down the track to have a, a dead bird and some track to a bacterial infection off the bird that he's got up his lung. Paddy? The bird's gone. Um, I think he might be still in hospital. Okay, let's pray for Brother Joe Hayden. Mm. Yeah, praise the Lord, the, the uh, doctors were able to find something there. And, Maybe they'd, they'd be able to treat that. So let's pray for <coughs> Brother Joe Hagen for healing me. <coughs> right, over on my right. I had to think about that. Let's continue to pray for the Gallets as they try to sell their house. The Lord's will be done there. Okay. All right. Sister Sharon, you're going to play for us tonight? So let's just spend a bit of time in prayer. <clears throat>